Hey community, welcome back or welcome. I thought I would take a break from my personal content to weigh in on this. For those who don't know, mental health and psychology is my field of study um, and I work with children. So this is actually something or these types of things are things that I'm very passionate about. I'm just gonna give a summary of, uh, you know, the events that occurred for those who might not have all the details. You already know I got my notebook handy dandy so I can make sure I don't miss any information. On this past Thursday, January 4th, 2024, um, a 17-year-old whose name was Dylan Butler, sad to say you guys, but he came to school and most of you I'm assuming are already knowing kind of the, um, the tragedy that occurred for the most part. He came to school loaded um, with guns and even I think they said they found a small, um, it wasn't I think the biggest threat, but they found a small type of like explosive. So he came to school loaded with weapons and unfortunately um, he did utilize those weapons and he ended up wounding five people that day. Again, and this is at a, I believe a high school, which was joined possibly with a uh, middle school. Anybody in the comments can correct me if I'm wrong, if I have that information incorrect, but he came loaded and he wounded five people, you guys. Um, four were students and one was a school administrator. I um, I was watching the news later on in the day after first hearing about it. And they said that that was the principal that was also injured. He injured five people, again, four students and one administrator, but then also he delivered a fatal blow to one student and that student was just in the sixth grade. I don't know the name of that student. I don't know if they even, you know, released it, which is of course understandable, but um, yeah, we know that he did not make it. Along with that student, um, it just makes me very sad to talk about this. I'm not even gonna lie. It's very hard for me to just get on camera and, you know, share. Um, but I think it's necessary that we have these conversations. Along with that one sixth grade student who um, unfortunately was delivered a fatal gunshot wound, Dylan ended his um, kind of his spree with uh, giving a gunshot wound that was self-inflicted to himself. As you guys know by the title, um, I'm just, this. these types of things make me think about, you know, what goes on inside the heads of um, children now and teenagers now, um, when we see these things happening more frequently. I wanted to share with y'all something I noticed. Y'all know what I noticed? I noticed that in times like this, and this stood out to me, that oftentimes when reporting cases like this, they often don't include the name of the shooter or the gunman. Um, they oftentimes kind of just label them as such. I noticed that when they write these headlines, you know, like the news articles and blogs and things and such, I noticed that they oftentimes don't include the shooter um, when they count the death toll, that the death count of, you know, such event, you know, in cases when the shooter actually did um, inflict the self-inflicted gunshot wound on themselves. I'm trying to avoid saying the S word, um, you know, cause I'm not sure if that has any like community guidelines against it. I don't want to be a trigger for anyone. But whenever there was a gunman who um, had a self-inflicted gunshot wound, they oftentimes don't count that person in the death count. They say, you know, mass shooting leaves one dead and, um, gunman also turned the gun on himself you know I don't want to reach or make something out of nothing um but that really did stand out to me and I do wonder if that's just I wonder if that's just one more way that we can see um how people and many of us even subconsciously ignore the stories and the complexity of shooters in cases like these or other criminals um and sometimes even just you know find ways to dehumanize them completely once people commit a crime I'm going to share more on that to come a little bit later in the video but there are some other things that I wanted to share in addition to um, when I was, you know, getting all the information about the shooting, like the details that occurred, I found a really, really just wild statistic, you guys, that is crazy that I'm sure most people don't even know. And that is that according to uh, CNN, who I retrieved this information from, this school shooting is one of at least, they said, one of at least four mass shootings that have already occurred in 2024. And this one marks the second shooting that um, was held or that occurred on school property in 2024. Like, y'all, y'all know how crazy that is? I just, I wanted to give a second, like I purposefully, like as I was like outlining and writing this down, I wanted to give a moment to let that sink in. Um, I'm gonna repeat that or honestly, I mean, well, I don't know. <laughs> I won't repeat it, but it's just crazy to me. Like I, I have to repeat that to myself to let it fully sink in. Like you guys, we're not even seven days into the year. like. We haven't even made it a full week. Um, I had to reread that when I saw it. I was like, are you sure? Like 2024, there's already been four mass shooting, two of two, mass shootings, goodness, two of which 
um, happened at schools. Hasn't even been a full week yet. It's January 6th, I think, as of me recording this. And this is where we are. I hope that that is just as shocking to you guys as it was to me. Here's the thing though. This is more information kind of on, you know, like Dylan um, and what is believed to have led up to the school shooting. I believe it was classmates of Dylan's that um, seemed to indicate strongly that he was bullied. I watched a couple of classmates on his get interviewed on TV on the news and um, they seem to make a, like, a really strong point, you know, that he was going through things and that um, he was like suffering in that way and was being bullied. And even uh, one of the girls had made a point to say that she tried her best to be there for him, which was just, it was so sad. You know, she started to get choked up um, when she was talking about it. But after that, I went online to try and, you know, learn more and figure out more about what that looked like. And the websites that I went to to learn more about that, you know, the bullying, um, all of them pretty much said that the police are still investigating the, um, you know, the truth to that claim. As much as I'm like personally annoyed with that statement, you know, that they're still investigating, I understand because, you know, jumping to conclusions um, is, it, it doesn't really help either, you know, when I know I wasn't there and I don't have all the information. Um, and so it is hard to place blame, um, just trying to, you know, not have bias in cases like these. Um, with that being said though, I think it's safe to assume like whether or not that they confirm, you know, I don't know how they would do that, but whether or not they confirm that he was being bullied or not, I think somebody, we collectively, preferably as a society, I mean by somebody, I believe, you know, we need to start asking and examining and cross-examining what factors um, are leading people and kids, y'all, like teenagers, what, what, what are leading what is leading teenagers and young kids even younger to want to take such extreme and unfortunate measures as this? Now, I have a few ideas. All jokes aside, um, this is obviously just my opinion. I put my notebook down because um, I, these are all just things that are in, in my brain. <laughs> I need to blow my nose. Part of me feels like, um, you know, that's a really big or wishful claim. You know, like I wish that everybody would just focus in on you know like what happened before this and while there's like so many things that we could focus on like you know a lot of people of course as a result uh, as a result of this are talking about um gun laws and regulating you know gun ownership laws and things like that gun use rather however it just it seems like out of all the things that we could be talking about not as many people are focusing on what mentally occurred leading up to this event. Even though that has been such a big recurring factor in why people um, just kind of lash out in this way, you know? I saw this post and it was actually very like intriguing and from the sense that I was like, that is so true. Like I didn't think about it, but in terms of gun laws, I'll definitely like find a screenshot or a screen recording and include it in the video. But in terms of gun laws, I saw this post, I was on Quora. I don't know if anybody else uses Quora or looks at it, but that's my social media sometimes. Cause if you know me, you know that I'm not on like all the mainstream social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I was on there and there was this guy who made a post. I think someone had asked about you know, opinions surrounding gun laws and why do we need to restrict or whatever. And as much as I agree that, yes, like it's always a both end for me, like, of course we need stricter gun laws. While at the same time though, like the guy in this post was saying, it's not the guns itself that are leading people to want to lash out and basically, you know, create a mass shooting. The post was just the guy talking about how when he was younger, um, you know, they had, guns on a regular um and they used you know guns as a part of like their regular life even in school or like hunting whatever um given you know this like type of experience varies on the culture i'm black needless to say like many people know that that's not something that we grew up doing as much like hunting um and just shooting guns um if you didn't know that is a popular stereotype that you know that's a thing that black people don't really do is like hunt, be out in the woods, all that type of stuff. That's another conversation. But not to take anything away from this guy, it's just, I thought he had a really strong point. I just felt like in general, I was like, that's so true that like guns have been around for forever, you know? Part of me feels like what I'm saying is really controversial, but it's all right. <laughs> guns have been around for forever, you know? And this is like, not me trying to say that guns aren't the issue it's just it feels like no one is looking at the person what is happening now 
in um, people's lives that is causing people to want to go the route of wanting to hurt others so severely. And that is causing people's mental health to decline so severely. Like, I just feel like as adults now, like we're supposed to look out for the next generation, but instead like us, you know, people in general, but then also like, I'm thinking about school administrators, politicians, parents, like, why isn't no one thinking about like, hey, we need to really like, but for real, like, cause I know mental health in general, I feel like, you know, is I talk about this all the time, um, or we did talk about this all the time in psychology classes, just how cool it is that this is mainstream conversation now, that mental health, yes, is becoming a bigger concern for people. Less people are afraid to see a therapist. Um, but also, I feel like in the right conversations at the right times, we don't ask the right questions. So in situations like these, why aren't people saying, hey, like, we need to prevent this, how? Yes, we're gonna regulate gun laws, but we're also, or gun usage, but we're also gonna talk about how to make sure no one feels the need to wanna to hurt this many people again. And yes, I already know, cause I feel like somebody's, you know, there's always that one person who's gonna say like, you can't control what people are gonna do. Um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> given yes, you can't control everybody. And yes, there are gonna be some people who are just kind of rogue, you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously there's gonna be some people who gonna shoot whoever they wanna shoot just because, they are psychopaths, like they are legit, you know, people like that who don't care um, or, you know, about the lives of others and have no emotion, show no regard for human life. Those are psychopaths, you know, talking about the type of people who they are not a victim. They didn't lash out because, you know, whatever. Yeah, psychopaths are a whole nother thing. But I'm talking about, you know, just the average kid now who's turning into a school shooter, like, I obviously don't know much about Dylan, you know, almost as a disclaimer, I'm like, I don't know what was going on inside his head. I don't know how bad he was being bullied. I'm not saying, you know, anything was justified or not. I feel the need to say that because, you know, some people will try to misconstrue. Um, all that I'm saying, y'all, as a person who cares for children in that way, as a person who's really passionate about mental health and who is just thoroughly shocked by the amount of gun violence that is occurring in what's supposed to be safe spaces, I feel like we need to ask so many more questions than what we're asking. What type of questions, so you say? I think about all those people that I was talking about, right? Like all the adults who would have a say in such conversations, politicians, school administrators, parents. We should all be asking ourselves, what are we doing that could lead to a decline in our children's mental health? What are we doing that could lead to, or that could be um, correlated to some of the behaviors that we're seeing? Is it social media? <laughs> Nobody ready to talk about that one though. Is it a lack of mentorship? Is it a lack of respect and empathy being taught to children? Is it simply just a lack of discipline and regard for others? Um, because if you know kids, you know that that's something that has to be taught. Is it a combination of both? I think, you know, this is just my opinion again, um, most likely, right? Because even I think psychologically, when you look at what makes up a person, it's not just any one culprit, right? What causes a person to choose to do certain actions. It's oftentimes nature and nurture at the same time. Um, it's oftentimes both a genetic predisposition as well as their environment, as well as a really significant traumatic event. And so I just, Y'all, it's really hard for me to just look at that and be like, you know, that's so sad. Um, all of that being true, albeit we like also just need to talk about how did we get here? How did we get to the point where there's been two mass, I mean, excuse me, two school shootings, four mass shootings in general, and we're not even a week into the new year. It's, it's something that is, I think, different from what generations in the past have seen. Of course, you know, like, there were other issues back then, obviously. Um, but now I think specifically, in addition to just what we're seeing happen in the world of like gun violence, in general, mental health now among um, young people specifically is at the worst that it's ever been. You don't believe me, you can go do the research yourself. Like depression rates, suicide rates, um, darn it, I wasn't supposed to say the S word. Um, anxiety, like it's bad, you guys. And it's like no one is speaking up. Um, it's almost sad. It's like no one is really speaking up on behalf of the kids because that's the thing, like kids are kids. Like when I think about, you know, what's being talked about now in terms of like technology in schools and parents, you know, raising iPad kids, it's like, 
no one is really diving in to talk about what affects i feel like mentally at least mainstream people are starting to talk about things obviously but nothing is really being done to shift the direction in which we're um just allowing our kids to kind of just tank in that way to kind of just fall um victim to all of the different influences that could cause their mental health to suffer and their even outlook on the world to suffer. So yeah, y'all, I'm a, I just pause to like, you know, think and also to blow my nose, but I pause to think cause you know, I don't want to ramble. I really do want to emphasize that there are things that people are ignoring now that are only going to make things worse. So much so that I probably have a video written down, like a video idea that I want to do about every single one. <laughs> I think about social media and the level of just like dissatisfaction that that can breed or I think about um, the lack of like presence from parents because um, even how that's tied to people needing two incomes to be able to just get by nowadays and what that means for children being at home and not having time with their parents, having that physical interaction. I think about the iPad kid epidemic and how so many of these kids um, aren't academically where they need to be. They can't read and write at freaking middle school levels um, and how that could even be leading to identity issues and bullying and all the other things. And don't even get me started on bullying in and of itself. Like I'm gonna make a part two just on schools and bullying because yeah, needless to say, it's not normal. It's not normal for this to be happening at the rates that it is. My deepest condolences, goodness, are with um, everybody involved, especially like I just think about, you know, the families for one, you know, one of the first things that come to mind, but then also like the students, like the other students who were just near, um, who knew the kid or didn't know him. And think about, you know, everyone who just had to witness that, especially like middle schoolers. It's just, it's all bad. Nobody wins in this situation. You guys should leave some comments down below. Uh, yeah, let's talk about it. Thank you for watching. I hope this sparks thoughts for you guys. Definitely, you know, keeps me thinking. Yeah, be safe out here, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next one.